Hello my friends, today we have uh, some sort of noise offender which actually didn't let me sleep another night. One, um, uh, so what it is, this is universal, yeah you hear that, universal CO and natural gas uh, detector and this thing suddenly started beeping uh, in the middle of the night and I was couldn't figure out what the hell is beeping and where it is. It took me some time to actually get to it and find this thing and turn it off. Turn out to be this thing has expiry date and it is listed over here and it says it plays by June 2019. Obviously it's long overdue but it's just start chirping uh, like last night and when it chirps two times it means replace alarm. So apparently yes it is expired and let's uh, get to the bottom of it to see what the hell makes this thing expire. Obviously we're gonna see how those sensors work. That's the most interesting part of it. Uh, so what um, what this unit is. So obviously um, as I mentioned is CO, uh, carbon monoxide and natural gas uh, detector. It has battery which we're gonna turn it off right now to stop this annoying chirp and battery actually is good condition already checked it it's uh, actually quite uh, new I think I replaced it some time ago and then we have uh, prongs uh, this thing is has double power so it can be powered from the wall and from the battery battery is only backup and um, and that's pretty much it and has all sorts of uh, manual over here says like you know co alarm four beeps pause repeat natural gas alarm one beep pause repeat low battery one chip 40 seconds trouble three chip 20 seconds and end of life service end of service life two chips 20 seconds very simple uh, instructions so yeah but so essentially means i have to replace this dude so let's take it open shall we all right after unscrewing um one two and three screws over here and uh, we are in a little bit of some spider stuff and bugs actually here yeah all right this is all blah. let's put it aside so interesting unit we have here uh, so first of all i don't like this uh, look at this smoldered part i guess this big ass one watt resistor is uh, part of a capacitor dropper i would like to know what's the um, power consumption of this unit because if this resistors uh, resistor uh, actually smoldered the area around it so it's probably dropping a lot of energy uh, obviously we have typical Pre, uh, the resistor over here capacitor dropper thing and this is uh, 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor that's probably after the dropping and what is this guy is ah, it's really hard to see how much 16 volts okay uh, yeah so typical capacitor dropper and that's pretty much it very very simple construction um, looks like there is also two indicators over here, green and blue. This is green and blue uh, LEDs. Not much going on on this area, but what I see a lot, this is button by the way, this contact is corresponds to this reset button or test button. This is battery contraption, compartment, and there is an interesting thing. First of all, it looks like it supports another uh, sort of contact over here, okay? Because this is... Uh, uh, this these two parts gonna be uh, and uh, those two parts and this parts they are contacts like like is like here so this spring spring thing will contact that that um, metal jumper over here so this is how very easily they made the just the contact but uh, look how many is uh, some unpopulated parts over here there's a uh, five here three over here and they say TB2 TB3 is 4 over here and that's it I think that's pretty much it oh my god I will clean up this sort of cobwebs over here as I understand this barrel over here is the sensor itself uh, I'm also curious to see what other sensors this thing has because I was expected if there is a this thing can uh, detect two distinct gases like CO and um, uh, natural gas uh, which is methane 
going to be two separate sensors but who knows maybe one sensor can do it all so yeah let's pull this thing out of the uh, I think it's screwed in any way but we're gonna use my poker maybe it's glued actually potentially you can see glue around I don't know it just um, it goes oh oh it conformally coated it's not glue okay okay just like that battery connected just soldered straight to the board no fancy contacts over here oh there is another uh, ground and date oh it's probably um, some sort of data I'm curious to know what's that about uh, under the bother bother is looks like can be just removed also I must note the very nice um, contraction um, how they uh, implemented the contacts so for for the live or for the main um, for, for the main so look, they just slides and snaps in slam in, in snap in place it's very nicely done uh, obviously that's probably uh, indicate that not much energy uh, this thing consume but still I'm curious to know because of that small dirt resistor and I don't really like it curious if I can just push this out to free that buzzer and to see what's underneath uh, it's not easy to do whatever it's no big deal but looks like it just can be lifted like that and I don't see oh there is a full bridge rectifier I think underneath one diode over here is probably Zener uh, voltage limiting and just three years the fourth diode no, no, no. I don't see it I see only three hmm, weird weird um, this RT I don't know what that's supposed to mean probably thermoresistor probably thermoresistor which is you no know, good to have or good to know okay let's look on the back side on the back side we have three one two three um, chips so those two seems like um, this highly likely is the voltage regulator because uh, out of this you have to get 3.3 or 5 volts for that microcontroller and whoever it is maybe this is like a pamp actually to do um, a comparison of levels what this sensor provides and the sensor doesn't say much but it has some kind of coding it's fi or s or 5 fi 51203-68 curious to know what it is um, uh, and how it works i kind of did some uh, preliminary research and figure out that there are so different um, so many different ways of actually detecting gases and curious to know what exactly is happening here or what exactly is actually used for general household inexpensive units like this also i'm curious to know what kind of microcontroller is this so we're gonna I'm gonna look into into this in details I'm sh hope I'll be able to scrape this core 02 um, a label from here and read but it's totally look for, like to me like some sort of peak microcontroller typical other form factor um, and gonna look at this um, a pamp is let me take a glimpse a closer glimpse and I'll be back okay guys it took some time to um, get around uh, what is what and figure out I still couldn't get uh, each individual part so let's start from the brain of operation we have here PIC 16F883 so this is pretty beefy PIC microcontroller from microchip and it does a lot of business that has it probably captures the signal from the sensor and here is here are three pins of the sensor one two three and sensor is actually pretty cool and let's take a look at the sensor so first of all I thought the sensor name is FIS but that turned out to be FIS it's just a okay let's me turn this around I hope you're gonna see that but, uh, it's hard so here's the sensor 
let's do it again. So this is um, this is the sensors. Apparently, this is the sensor who can handle both gases like uh, carbon monoxide and um, methane. And uh, FAS blah 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 just here is actually all the nomenclature of the Nisha sensors from Japan because it looks like the company you got renamed. So in the sensor type is SB9511. Again, this is old product. It's not manufactured anymore. So this um, semiconductor type of sensor apparently, and it uses uh, heat and cold cycles in order to detect uh, both gases, CO and methane. And um, the way it's done, apparently it has, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna include the official um, uh, how you call it, official spec sheet, but I just wanna, uh, so essentially it has a heating coil, all right, and it has a um, semiconductor, let's, let's, I don't know how to size, okay, let's do another resistance here, it's gonna be essentially two resistances, uh, okay, so this gonna heat up, and when it's heat up, resistance will be changed of this particular, um, let's say one, two, three, I don't remember the exact pinout, everything will be in the, in, in the spec sheet. And, then, and when this tin, tin dioxide semiconductor detects specific gas under specific temperature, it resist, resistance is changed and going to be detected by on this pin. You can read the resistance. So in order to detect carbon mon monoxide, you would have to uh, heat up this thing to, the, to, to keep it at low temperature. And based on that, your resistance at, at this contact would be um, indicating of the presence uh, of carbon mon monoxide. And at the high temperature, this tin dioxide semiconductor going to detect properly a methane and and it's obviously going to indicate that too. So this uh, alternate cycles of heat and low and uh, uh, able to detect two specific gases. So this is pretty nifty device. Uh, I kind of like how they implemented it. So I'm not sure what's the timing in between those two. Again, it can be provided in the in the uh, sh uh, spec sheet. But what, I, uh, what they mentioned also, what I read there, this on top of here is carbon filter and uh, I don't know why they have carbon filters they didn't say in documentation but apparently to cut out on unnecessary other gases like for example um, uh, other hydrocarbons heavier particles or something to this extent and to not trigger I guess uh, false positives in this sensor I guess this is why this whole unit is actually is expired because if this sensor happened to be filled with junk you won't be able to reliably detect CO and methane and I think this is purely a wild gas because in different environments this sensor will fill in sorry this uh, methane field uh, charcoal filter will fill in with different rates but I think the day timing is programmed in this big microcontroller over here and no matter what you do uh, no matter what's exactly is happening in the sensor it's gonna keep beeping so it just has pre-programmed -pre like number of you know seconds or minutes or whatever days counted over here so it probably has specific counter for this purpose uh, yeah Anyways, so this is all microcontroller jobbies and uh, obviously all those contacts over here, uh, these and these and uh, this data as I, as I shown before, uh, they are connected to microcontrollers. So th those are either programming pins or this some sort of calibration pins or data exchange pins. That's a cool to poke around but without knowing what's actually going on and if this chip can be somehow secured, I don't know. I'm not, uh, unfortunately, um, I never played with peak so I'm I'm pretty pretty much in the wild territory wild gas territory right now okay let's go further so this dude over here is a uh, not a pump as I thought you don't need to have a pump apparently for this oh, by the way sensor operates at 5 volts you don't need to have um, so this is pro this is just a piezo horn driver it's to drive this buzzer that's it that's all his duties so apparently you need dedicated chip for this and if you go a little bit down here there's a five volt i think it is five volt a voltage regulator but i could not find anything about this like he couldn't google so this uh, on on top of it it says hj1339 or maybe this is zero it's really hard to read 
uh, I did I scrub the conformal coating with acetone uh, but I don't I hope I didn't actually rub of any uh, uh, numbers over here but looks like it says aj1339 could not find but i know that this microcontroller and this sensor operates at 5 volts so i assume there is a dedicated voltage regulator and judging by uh, traces over here they pretty beefy traces they are seems like uh, 5 volt uh, sorry this seems like a voltage regulator is it 5 volt or something around that i don't know for sure but Judging uh, by the uh, sensor which operates at 5 volt plus minus plus minus 0.5 percent, that has to be a voltage regulator because you cannot do it by some willy nilly zener or something like that. Uh, all right, this is pretty much it for now. I guess I cannot dig any further because not much really left around here. The most interesting part was this particular sensor, and it's turned out to be pretty robust um, semiconductor solution, uh, which gonna last years uh, and probably gonna last forever, except that this charcoal filter is essentially has a lifespan. Um, I will try to dig a little bit more information how long is usually this charcoal filter supposed to last because for some reason it's not specified in specification. Um, so I don't know, maybe this is some sort of arbitrary number they programmed here to do to sell more products in this peak. Uh, but I unfortunately I cannot use this product because it's just keep constantly annoying hell out of me. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope this was useful and I open something interesting to you and you learn uh, something. If you uh, like this sort of video, please subscribe and if you have any ideas and suggestions, please throw me a message. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy.